The whole time in my heart I'm screaming, Jesus, 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 Jesus. The whole time. They're giving me alcohol. And I'm seeing the devil. He's coming close to me. And he reminds me and he says to me, I've stolen you. I've killed you. Now I'm about to destroy you. My name is Muhammad Ope. I'm originally from Limpopo, but my mother got married in Mpumalanga. So if I had to describe myself, I would describe myself as a very humble individual. And I grew up as a very reputable person. But sometimes I tend to be very seething towards other certain aspects of my life because you know, I wouldn't know what to do. And that it just so happens that I annihilate my own reputation in the process. So whatever it is that I'm about to tell you is going to sound unbelievably untrue because I've told quite a few people and it seemed like, well, some of them believed it some of them did not believe it. And most of the time when I tell my story, it's like I'm telling a movie, some sort of a movie. So with the risk of um, eradicating my reputation, I'm willing to do it for Jesus this time. I grew up in, 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 in Bella Vela, in, in boarding school. I went to boarding school my entire life and everyone I know is, 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 is from boarding school and on that note my, my whole life was based around everything else that happens in, in, in boarding school so when I, when I got to boarding school my mother used to tell me a scripture in the Bible where he says the devil comes to steal kill and, 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 and destroy but like when you're young you don't really take that seriously. So, my story is based on my near-death experience and everything else that came after it. In, in, in high school, I was the one guy that, that never drank, never partied, never smoked. Well, even now I don't smoke, but I was that guy. I played rugby, I was very good. Academics, I was, I was, I was a fair student. <laughs> I was a virgin till I was like 19. So some of the things that people I went to school with, you know, I wasn't taking part in. I just focused on rugby and school and that was it. And then I met Jesus when I was in grade eight. And from there I just became the guy who, who loved God at school, the guy who loved rugby. I passed my matric, I enrolled to go study film and television, and that's where everything started. I stayed at, in Brownfontein at a race called South Point. So I stayed there, obviously the rules are that you don't know parties, no sleepovers, you know, your visitors, no visitors after 11. I don't know if they still do that now. But secondly, I started, you know, imbibing in alcohol. And you know, back then my mother wasn't fi as financially stable as she is right now. Now she's doing very well. So she would send me like 600 bucks a month. That includes food and fun. So, you know, I would drink like, 50 bucks for me because you know I wasn't really a heavy drinker at that time. Um, I met, I can't say the wrong people because we only met because of the language that we spoke. We spoke the same language. You know, when you come to Joburg, there's, there's a lot of languages. I can only speak three languages fluently Shitonga, Afrikaans, and Sipedi. So, everyone in that circle of the language that I spoke, I befriended, became my friend at that time. 
So we were a group of, I think six, if I can remember, and we all spoke to Beatty. Some went to Vert, some went to UJ, I went to uh, City Varsity to go study college. But we stayed at a race, but then this time it wasn't one of those races that that many strict rules. So you were allowed to have sleepovers. I think it was seven days. Everybody threw parties at that at that time. And the year was 2014, where even in the hip-hop community, people like Casper were still coming up. And so South Point would host these events where they would bring all these celebrities. My life changed. At that time, it was a time where you know, celebrities like the hip hop community was still like up and coming and celebrities like Casper was, was still, you know, trying to be, get into the industry and be that good. The whole South Point community would all party. So now, some of the guys I used to hang out with had money. Remember, I'm the guy that, you know, whose parents are sending like 600 bucks and the one is, I don't know, 2,000, and then the other one is getting a thousand something. But there was this one guy who had like a lot of money amongst us. I eventually got a job through South Point because, you know, I remember, like I said, I studied film and television. So as a replacement, I decided to do photography. Film and photography is just like very, very close. If you can, if you know about film, I don't think photography can be that hard. So I became a South Point photographer. So I was very close. So if there was a celebrity performing, I became very close, you know, to, to the action. I don't know where the other guy got the money, but he was like making it very, 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 very well. So it got to a point where I became financially independent because I was getting paid every week. So I would, you know, like I said, I, I stayed at a place where sleepovers were allowed. So. Occasionally, I would, I would like take the girl to my apartment and for the night and we'll do our thing. And at that level, it was like, um, how can I put it? It was not as hectic. I, 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 I thought, I thought, you know, amongst us boys, whenever you, you know, you come down the lift with a, with a very beautiful girl, you get all these high fives. You know, so I want to save money so I can go live in Pretoria. It was a lot easier living in Pretoria than Joburg. I didn't want to live the same life without those guys, you know, in Joburg. And so, yeah, the inevitable happened. Exactly what I imagined would happen did happen. Even like, uh, let me say, ten times that. So we, you know, we were shooting and. I think 2018, August, every, every Thursday I was on TV. I think I, I passed eight, I can't remember, or I passed seven, something like that. So I would tell people, guys, well, oh, nah. you know they shoot like three months prior or two months prior to the to airing of the episode. So I would, you know, I would post, guys, well, oh, nah. like, check me out, I'm, I'm going to be on TV very soon. And I did, and everybody saw it. Everyone I, I, I showed. And because I'm a photographer, my client base went from, how can I put it, making 15,000 a month to 15,000 a weekend. Because of just that small gig that I did, that I got on television. Man, I was like, okay, 2019, I'm moving to Pretoria. I have the money, I've saved up enough. I have furniture, I have everything, you know. When I moved in to, uh, to, to Pretoria, I stayed, I stayed in, you know, in, in Hatfield. Hatfield is quite expensive, it's like New York. People don't sleep over there. And even restaurants don't even close. I mean, I was staying below KFC next to me. If I can remember, it was like Burger King. I would wake up at like 2 a.m. and all these restaurants would still be open. So it was like that, the lifestyle was like, three times better than Bramfontein. And this time I had money, you know? Well, I thought I had money. In between, 
you know, I, you know, I still remember my mother's words when, when, when she said to me, when I was in primary, the devil comes to steal, kill and destroy. But I would ignore that because of, you know, I, I, you know, I couldn't dissociate myself with the life. It was very hard and, and it's very addictive. And to be honest, at some point in my life, as a photographer, I was making over 45K because now I started doing corporate gigs. You know, Transnet was, was on my list. Zenex, Frontline Africa, Ditsong. Ditsong owns uh, most museums in Pretoria. So I was the guy who was taking all those pictures and I was just sending, I was sending like three quotations a week and when they come back, you know, it's like easy, 25,000. You know, my rent is 5.5, you know. My daughter wasn't that expensive because, you know, I, like I said, I stayed in Tembisa, met a girl, we made a baby. <laughs> I love my daughter, by the way. Uh, well, I met a guy who wanted me to take pictures of his construction company, so he would send me to a, uh, what he calls this, to, to, to on site. He would give me a buggy, give me his black card, and say, dude, go to Bumalanga. Here's the address, go there, take pictures, come back to my office, can you sit here and edit, have a time of your life, swipe whatever food you want to swipe. Hey, hey, that was cool, that was nice. And I looked at the guy, hey, the guy smells good, his skin is flawless, he's driving a BMW, and he doesn't only have a BMW, he had like seven cars. So this one time, we were going to Mudu Midupi power station. You know, to go to go shoot there, he gave me this uniform, and I felt good underneath the uniform. You know, um, reflector, and I'm wearing all this um, safety, whatever. And I was like, I imagined myself. So we got there, we booked. I don't know, I don't know. Uh, out of nowhere, you know, girls were involved. I don't know where you got the girls, and it was nice. I was like, I want to adopt to this lifestyle. The photography has money, but like it can wait. I want that. So I hung around him long enough for myself to start my own construction um, company. Believe it or not, I worked with Stephanie and Stocks for build apartments. Um, on my record, I built two double story houses. You know, I easily made 73,000 in two weeks. And that's after like paying the people that worked for me at that time. Now I'm hiring now, I'm hiring people and I'm having a time of my life. <sighs> and then, uh, I don't know. You know, every time I say this story, it's, 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 it's like, So five, there was a time where I went to a friend of mine's party to go, so I get there. But you know, I'm used to partying and I, and I get to a party, every time I get to a party, I'm the guy, you know. But this time, everything was like weird. Nobody wanted to hang out with me. No girl wanted to talk to me. Yeah, you know, they would, they would strike up a, a very, you know, tiny conversation, like small talk type of a conversation. It was like I was, I was forcing myself, you know, to be the guy of the party. And so they had run out of alcohol and it was like very late. So I couldn't risk going out and, 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 and buying alcohol because I could afford it. But so the, 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 the replacement for it was was weed. I mean, I don't smoke even now, today, till today, I don't smoke. And fine, I, you know, I'm like, ah, fine, there's no alcohol. Let me take, let me take the joint. When you smoke weed for the first time, the best thing you want to do is feel what it's like to be high. And you're gonna all out, go all out for it. People are taking two pubs, you're taking more than five pubs. 
pubs and they look they look at you and they laugh. And funny enough, I've never seen a weird person force anybody to do it. They just offer you a joint. If you say oh, no, I'm good, they they pass it on to the next person. So and then there was like space muffins. So I smoked the weed, I become hungry, and then they're like, no, oh, have, have some space muffin. If I can describe what a space muffin is, I mean, I'll be honest, I'm not a smoking expert. I know a lot about alcohol rather than smoking. Uh, it's, it's, they bake cookies and they mix it with like raw weed within it, and then they bake it when you eat it, like you like take in whatever the weed you know, does to you. Mind you, I, I drank and, I, and, I, and I'm hungry and now I'm, 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 I'm eating these space muffin, muffins on an overdose level. People are eating like one one and then they're taking like 30 minute interval breaks and I'm just, I'm just like going all out for it. And the reason why I, go, I went all out for it was because I, I, I couldn't give a damn. Nobody wanted to hang out with me anyway. So I resorted to, to the space muffins. I remember uh, walking back to my apartment. Like I said, Hatfield is like New York. You know, daylight and night, they say, safe. You can walk from flat apartment to apartment. So I walked from my friend's apartment and I was very dizzy. So I get to my apartment and what I, what I do remember was that I, I, I slept, right? Slept for the first time, woke up, went to the toilet, and I vomited everything, vomited everything. Fine, I went back to my room, and I remember waking up for the second time. But what's, what's really confusing and, and, and crazy was that I was like fresh. I felt like I felt like a horse. I don't want to lie. And so it's funny because I wanted to go to the to to, to, to the toilet again and and, and 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 wash my face. The more I wanted to go to the toilet, the you know I started elevating, you know. And it was funny because when I turned around, I could see myself. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, fine, why am I laying on the bed? At the same time, I'm, 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 I'm here and, and you know, my spirit is being elevated. All of a sudden, everything went blank, like super blank. I don't know how to describe the feeling. It's like, it's like if I had to put you in a space that's the size of a public toilet, everything is closed down and you're in the dark. If you, if you, even if you're not claustrophobic, you're definitely going to um, feel some kind of a way. And there was a time when I, I, I was like, there was a lot of confusion in, in my mind at that time because now, now my friends are no longer there. You know, everything doesn't count. The money doesn't count. So I see, I see a guy driving in, in a red um, convertible car, right, with girls. But he's driving in circles. So I can feel that this guy, this guy is driving in circles. He's not going anywhere. And so everything was like a loop in that place. Everything is a loop. So meaning like if, if, if like me, I'm going to give an example with me. I was drunk and high at the same time. So I was battling to be sober, but I couldn't. Everything was just repeating itself, repeating, 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 repeating. And in front of me appeared like small, how can I put it? Small demons. Yeah, and they would feed me all these alcohol, a lot of alcohol. They had all the alcohol in the world, but I was crying and I was like, nah, nah, I don't want this. But it just couldn't happen. So when I look at the horizon and I just started seeing like a lot of people that were there. People that was suffering for their own reasons why they were there. 
right? So my suffering was, you know, I was being fed all this alcohol and drugs at the same time. I don't want it, and that was like my punishment. And they they were suffering from, you know, you'd see a guy you know, who gossiped a lot, and he was suffering for whatever reason. But nobody really cares. Like I, I didn't care what that guy was suffering about. So. I didn't think they cared about me either. So, and I'm confused, and I'm like, where, where is this place? And eventually, you know, to be to be quite honest, I was like, uh, I'm practically in hell. I just died from overdose, and I'm in hell. Like I said, it it's, it it always sounds unbelievable when I explain this story. So. There was these noises that was like irritating because now I'm trying so hard not to. Um, you have these noises that are like irritating, and then you go from the noises, and you 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 are constantly reminded of the lifestyle that you used to live in. And I was like, damn, my mother was right. My mother was right. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy, and I don't know. So for me, that was like, it was like game over at the time. You know, the devil coming to steal, kill, and destroy. And before I knew it, there was this heavy presence, you know, I, you know, I, I knew I, I'm about to meet the devil face to face. When I saw him, it was like huge, huge, scary. I don't know. I don't know of any possible description. You know, like I said, every time I tell, it sounds like a movie. I really don't know how to reenact this for somebody. You know, watching this to understand. You know, to to assimilate the, the entire story with with a lot of understanding because it's really hard. The best thing I can do is was like re he was like really scary, and the whole time in my heart I'm screaming Jesus, 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 Jesus. The whole time they're giving me alcohol, and I'm seeing the devil. He's coming close to me, and he reminds me, and he says to me, "I've stolen you. I've killed you. Now I'm about to destroy you." The exact same word that my mother told me. Damn. And before that, I still remember there was this light that came in into the place very, very fast. I don't know how to describe the, the speed because, I don't know, man, spiritual things are very hard to explain. I don't want to lie. And when, when the light came through, Everything fell and I could hear the noises from the back from from the back all the way to the other side And it sounded like bah, 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 bah. Even the devil himself and it was like this person when, when, when he came closer to me I Couldn't I couldn't stand his presence first of all. I knew it was Jesus because You know I when it's Jesus and it's him for real, you don't need to be told that it's him. You know, like that, that that's the that, that's Messiah, you know. And the closer he got to me, the more guilt I felt. I was ashamed of looking at him. First of all, he doesn't have a face. I didn't see his face. From here upwards, he was just bright, too bright. And then below, he was, he, was, he was wearing a white robe, in front is white, at the back is purple. Purple represents the kingdom, you know, and white represents what the Bible describes as him shining brighter than snow, and he did shine brighter than snow. He was clean, flawless, and everything. So he took um, whatever it is that he was holding, it was like this long stick, and he stabbed me on my heart, but when he pulled it, some weight got lifted off of me. 
all of a sudden I wasn't scared of anything. I wasn't scared of the devil. I wasn't scared of anyone. And when I look at the devil, he's like small. He's he was completely destroyed. He's everything is running away. So fine, we leave. We go from there. You know how a cat or a dog or a lion holds its cubs or puppies. You know they hold their neck. And that's how he held me, and we flew straight to heaven. It, it seemed far, but like the speed was like too fast. It was like too fast. I couldn't, I couldn't go in, but like, you know, first of all, when I saw Christ, he was like bigger than me. But when you got there, he was like the same height. And then when I see heaven, I can't go in. On the right, it's, it, you know, there was like all these diseases that was written. So meaning that if you die of any disease, you were given a new body. The, di the Bible says that, you know, and the disease that you die with stays outside and it stays there. And I just entered but like two meters into it and there was it. I couldn't go further. When you look um, to, to, you know, towards the horizon, all you see is like there's a person there, there's another person there. It's very empty. But like down there in hell, it's really packed. So, and you see Jesus, I, I, maybe this sounds crazy. So I see him over there far on the throne. Sorry, and then at the same time, he's here with me. And then at the same time, I see him over there with that person, particular individual. He's like everywhere at the same time. and. The, there is no division when coming to, to his attention. There was, there was the, 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 the most amazing part about it. There was no division when coming to, to, to his attention. Everything was 100%. So first of all, the colors were, were brighter. And every emotion that we feel here on earth, in heaven, it's a person. So, for example, hope. Hope is a person when you get, you know, it, it's hope. Faith is a person. Um, love is a person. You meet all these emotional uh, uh, beings that are described as emotions. I didn't know. I didn't know that when, when somebody says grace, you know, up there in heaven, that's a person who lives there. And so far, and I, and I just, like I said, I went in two meters into it, and then we left. We were in the middle of nowhere. And while we're there, in the middle of nowhere, I see the earth, I see hell, I see um, heaven. So that's when I started speaking to Christ. But when you, when you communicate with Christ, it's not like me and you. It's, it's nothing that happens verbally. It's all spiritual and, you know, you speak through feelings. That's why you can't lie in the spiritual realm. You, you cannot lie. I feel how you feel and I know that you're telling the truth and you're not telling the truth. So the one thing I asked him is, that, why did you fetch me after all these things that I've done? And he said, when you were in high school, there was like a lot of people that got saved. Uh, man, because of you. And I came here to fetch you because of that. So, then I was speechless. Sometimes, you know, the little things you do for God, we take them for granted. And you think it doesn't count to Him. But imagine. Like I said in the beginning that I started a movement in, in high school where people were getting saved. I mean, of, of course, like there were, there were some dudes that made fun of me. Yeah, you know, it's high school. But the vast majority of them's lives changed, even though they're not going to tell you about it. But their lives changed. And he was like, that's the reason why I fished you. As I'm trying to answer him, everything else, every question that I needed to ask was answered. I don't know how, how he does that. It's just so amazing. So, before I know it, I'm back. Like, I wake up and I was like crazy. I couldn't remember people's names. 
here am I in my apartment. The only person I can remember was my mother. My phone would ring and I'd be like, damn, who's this? You know, for two days, nothing happened. Two days. And when I checked the time, everything that happened between heaven, hell, me, Jesus, happened in two minutes. Because when you're there, time stops. Time shifts, there is no time. But it felt like hours. It's unbelievably hard to explain. Everything happened, seemed to happen in two minutes. So, what happened after that in my life? You would think that I would become on fire for God and I would become this pastor after what, what happened at that time. But here's what happened. My mother got remarried. I lost everything I had. Uh, the guy I subcontracted under ran away with like over a million and a half. I couldn't pay the guys. Lost my car, lost my apartment. I had a, an altercation with my, my stepdad. And instead of going back home, I just went. I was on the street. Not literally on the street, thank God. I went back to Bella Bella and I would sleep at people's houses, like I would say. So I, I started drinking a lot because I couldn't sleep. Business started doing bad. To this day, there, there was like people, you know, I shot stuff for and I couldn't deliver. I was always drunk, I would, I would go to, to a, a shoot. Because like I said, people still believed in me, but I would go to a shoot and people was, would be like, damn, like, you, look, you, look, you, look, you don't look like before. You look, you no longer have the body, you know, ways, ways them how that we know. And I would get there drunk and I would leave drunk and I would delay, you know, I would take like months before I give somebody else their, their work. And I would sleep from houses to houses. Whenever I would go to this guy's house, I would lose something. When I would go to that guy's house, I would lose another thing. And for, for two years, till, till, till very, very recently, I, my mother and I were not speaking. Mind you, I left home because, like I said, my mother got remarried. I got into it. A physical alt um, um, altercation with, with, with my stepdad. Like it was physical, it was crazy. And I felt like my mother had abandoned me at that time. <laughs>